good to hear. Where is this actually? Where's the control? The views and opinions expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of the staff and management of Salem Media of Hawaii. Thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Friday, raising public awareness about technology, energy, globalism, and diversification. I'm your host, Attila Saras. Um, joining us today is John Scott. Now, John Scott is the department chair for uh, Remington College here in downtown Honolulu. Thank you for joining us on this show today. Until it's, uh, it's actually my pleasure. And this is the first time that I've had a chance to actually be down here or up in the Eagle's Nest, I guess, or however you say it. But mm -hmm. I'm on the road. You know, I'm on the road and I hear you um, just about uh, every Friday. I really? hear Jay and you guys talking. Thank you. And I, and I think that you probably dominate in terms of uh, sensible talk at 4 o'clock in the afternoon for people that are driving along. And I, and I suspect there's a lot of people right out there that are not saying, hey, listen to brother. He knows. You know, he's been sitting in my seat. And so that should be a, a personal endorsement to everyone listening. Be sure to tune in every Friday. And we're also broadcasting online. I don't know if you knew that, John, no, but we're also on thinktechhawaii.com. Uh, you can go there and download podcasts of this and previous episodes. Uh, all of our shows are on there, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday shows, every day from 4 to 5 on Think Tech Friday. Uh, and we are also being streamed live uh, on ustream.tv, so people can actually tune in right now mm -hmm. and watch our conversation and me waving to the camera and all that good stuff. So it's, it's a really exciting way to communicate better with our listeners. So they're looking at us right now? They they may be, that's correct. Wow. Or if not now, then maybe later on, if they happen to miss the show. So um, good thing you you uh, you put on your makeup and do your hair, and, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's very fortunate. Now, what we really wanted to talk today about, uh, oh, by the way, before I forget, if anybody listening wants to join the conversation, ask a question or make a comment, call our studio. 296-5467 is the number. That's 296-5467. And if you want to join us in our downtown studio, just call Jay Fidel. He's our founder. Um, you can call him at that same number or email him, j at fidel.com. That's F-I-D-E-L-L. -L. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's happening at um, Remington College. Now, I know your background is, is in all kinds of stuff. You know, you've... Um, you went to uh, Manoa and you graduated from uh, the Manoa School of Business in finance in particular. Uh, you were a uh, trustee for a bankruptcy court and um, you have a lot of background in implementing uh, management information systems. In fact, you mentioned to me how uh, you worked for a uh, French gourmet, which sounds like a food company, but I guess there's a lot of technology involved in that. Gave you a uh, a little bit of an edge, and you, and you, in fact, you won an award, right, in 1998 for that? It, it's true. You know, um, actually, a little, little bit of background on French Gourmet. Because I had actually worked as a, as a trustee in bankruptcy, I had an opportunity to see all the companies and what not to do. And one of the things that they really did not have much a handle on was uh, concepts of cash flow and information systems. You know, we would walk into these places, and these guys would be just looking at you. I you know, didn't have any information. They didn't know what, you know, they had no vision. They had no plan. When I helped Patrick and Christy at the French Gourmet, I, I simply just said, you got to run this company by the numbers. And they didn't have $69 for a package for accounting. So I made them a little spreadsheet. And I said, every month, every month, balance your books. Don't do anything else. Don't even start the next day until you do this. So they took me at my word. And that was the beginning of a long friendship. And since then, I think a lot of businesses have gone that route, right? They really try to focus on the bottom line. They watch their numbers every day, they watch to see where they're going, they try to do projections, and it's nice that we have all this great software that can do that. And part of that, I know, I, th I think has moved on uh, and, and has gained you that, uh, that position as the department chair uh, for the management and information technology systems at Remington College, which is right here in downtown. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's a great school. It's uh, What building is that in? It's, uh, well, the address is 1111 uh, Bishop Street, and it is actually called the Remington College building. It's just across from uh, Long's Drugs, corner mm -hmm. of Hotel okay, Bishop. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's, how, long is, uh, how long has that university been around? You know, I've been there since 2000. It was Education America, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, it, it turned out to be uh, Remington College, but that was just an internal thing where they just did a renaming process. So I would say that uh, Remington College has probably been there since maybe 1999. So it's, would you say it's become sort of the staple 
of the uh, of the Hawaii landscape. You know, it has. When people now refer to the Remington College building as as a as a jumping off point, and that is get off the bus at the Remington College uh, building, or it, it's in. Um, if you look in Google Maps, you know we're right there in the Google Maps. You see, you see that we have a position. We mm -hmm. have a position, and people understand exactly where the school is. Well, and and that's the thing about things that we kind of take for granted. Sometimes they change. Now I know, um, you know, our title for the mm -hmm. show today is the State of Tech Education in Hawaii. And the reason I wanted to bring you on the air so we could talk is about some of the changes that are taking place in Remington. And you know, these changes kind of remind me of something that happened to me relatively recently. And um, as recently as today, in fact. Um, I went out and I, I had lunch today and I had my favorite, which is katsu chicken. Katsu mm -hmm. chicken and rice. Oh, it's so good. Shouldn't have it every day, but you know, <laughs> every once in a while, it's the, the fried best. chicken. Right? Oh, especially when you're hungry, it's so great. You know, you have the, <laughs> that sauce, the chicken, you have a little bit of mac salad. It's, it's so good. But, you know, when you want katsu chicken, if you're not in Hawaii, what do you do? It's kind of hard to find, isn't it? It's more difficult. So you kind of take it for granted that, you know, your favorite your favorite dish is going to always be there for you. There's going to be an L&L -L -L around the corner or a Locomoco or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, there's mm -hmm. always someplace there, but it goes away so quickly. Mm -hmm. and you don't mm -hmm. realize it until once it's gone. Mm -hmm. And that's what's happening at Remington, right? Are we losing something? <laughs> Are we talking about my program now, We're brother? talking about your program. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, you know, we, uh, in the networking, the computer networking uh, technology program has wound down, and I taught out the last class uh, in January of this year. Uh, sad to say, um, the program itself uh, had, was a great idea. It was very, very broad in scope, and that is, for, for career colleges, you look at uh, students, you look at lifelong learners, and you look at professionals, and you try to come up with a program that's going to hit everybody. Well. I got to say that this particular program was pretty broad. And this was and, a technology program. Oh yeah, it was computer networking administration program. But it was we were basically an IT shop. IT and, well, and there's lots of uh, everyone's got a computer network. Why why is the education for that now going away? Mm, you know I got to say first of all about our program is uh, because our our population of students uh, was young, new people that wanted to get started in the career, sure. and the scope of our program was very, very broad. And, and and let's face it, it was hard. It was a very hard program. It was it was very difficult to uh, inter, uh, try to get people to become professionally trained in just the two years that we have a chance. You know, I can say that I see people's eyes light up and catch it, but we're like in uh, in month twenty out of twenty four months, right? So. We ran out of time in many cases with these students, so it was uh, it was kind of frustrating in a way. By the same token, I tell you that on my wall I have a list of 131 names of people that had of people students, my students that had actually received professional certifications, hmm. and for each one of those they were high five and they were hugging in the halls. This was just an incredible boost for them, right? So you know that that contact high is something that gave us a good payoff also. So. Just to get back to uh, kind of the, 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 the heavy breathing part here, the program wound down simply because we were too broad for, for our particular student population. Uh, that's the bottom line. That's what happened. Now, are you the only vocational school that's offering such a program in Hawaii? Oh, no. We have, there are a variety of different uh, other schools that offer um, IT type programs. And, uh, and, and like us at Remington, we're going through this change of trying to offer uh, good academic training and as well, I said training, academic education and as well training, so that when they pop out at the other side, they have, they've, they've got a, a skill. Now, skills are something that you get with training. You don't get skills out of education. What you can get out of education is maybe a bachelor's degree, right? But, uh, but it, it's the it's the skills that we want to impart on these people. So there's this thin line that everybody's walking now, and that is we need education, but we need training. We need to turn these people out so that they are productive. And, and let's face it, when somebody gets out of school, the last thing an employer wants to do is hire them. The last thing. Why is but, that? Well, well, they know that a new person coming in is going to cost them. It's going to take somebody out of the loop while they train them, bring them up to 
you know, bring them up to speed. New student, may, new person coming in may have baggage. Uh, they may not fit. They may not even work in with, well with the other people that are uh, existing in the environment. So all that the employer is doing is just holding on and just hoping that they're going to feel better with this person than without the person. So, so they bring them in. And the thing that we wanted to have our students walk in with was a little toolkit, a little pop open toolkit of skills. And, and that's kind of the focus. That's exactly what the rest of our programs are doing at Remington, providing those entry level skills so that the pain isn't so great when you bring somebody on. Well, so what has been a successful program at Remington? Our clinical medical assisting program is uh -huh. incredibly good. Of course, the field is ever expanding. You know, we have a shortage of nurses, we have a shortage of doctors. We have people that are, frankly, getting older and older and in a population that possibly, I don't see it myself, but it could possibly need more health care at various different uh, stages in their life. We have people that come to our program. They, uh, when they pop out at the other side of our program in two years, they're in the clinics, they're on the wards, uh, they're in the doctor's offices. They're up and running. Now, why is it that someone can go through a clinical training program, hit the ground running when they graduate, and someone who goes through a technology training program, which I think you and I can both mm -hmm, agree, mm -hmm, technology is mm -hmm. everywhere, right? There's a strong need for this kind of uh, for this skill. Then an employer is not interested in hiring them. Well, we'll get to that mm -hmm. when we get okay. back from the break. This is Think Tech Friday here with John Scott. He's the department chair of uh, Remington College. Stay tuned. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street right. Business right. Network. So, no new accidents or stalls. The last accident was in Waipahu on Port Weaver Road at Leo Lewis Street. If you're going west, it's already slow on the way to the stadium. The H1 slows at the airport on ramp on the viaduct, and the Wanalua slows at Fort Chapel really Flats. I'm really interested Inbound traffic is jammed at the Middle Street merge, and then the H1 is crawling to the downtown exits. This From the east side, the H1 Evabound uh, slows when you get no, to the Wilder. You know, I look for people who are coming out of school because I know that they're willing to work harder, right? So um, a student comes out, they got, you know, loans. They need a place to stay. They want opportunities for advancement. Yeah, maybe they want to get in with a big company, but sometimes those big companies require experience, and they don't have that. So they may have the skills, maybe not necessarily experience, and they'll pick that up. So um, I think that'd be really interesting okay, to talk so about. Okay, so let me see if I can develop it like this there. And that is, first of all, the field's getting much more technical. However, in my view, new jobs okay. new jobs are just not being generated from the work administration. I and just want to let you know, it's going to be you when we get back. Your spot. I'm remembering. I have a way of reminding you now. Okay. <laughs> it's great, sweet nothings. <laughs> So, so as productivity in the field increases, uh, the individuals themselves, the remaining individuals, are able to do more and more and more. And as a practical example is uh, uh, Windows 2012, where they have the virtualization of everything. And is prior to when I first came, we st when I first started teaching technology and stuff. We Think Tech Hawaii is a Hawaii nonprofit corporation yeah, organized in the year 2000. Yeah. Its purpose is to raise public awareness yeah, about the importance yes. of technology, so, energy, yeah. agriculture, and globalism yeah. to the diversification yeah. and expansion yeah. of our economy. We do this by television shows on community yeah. television yeah. Yeah. and on OC16, yeah. by newspaper articles, yeah. and by our Think Tech yeah. radio yeah. series on KGU 760 AM. We also do it by panel programs and events, including our monthly luncheon yeah. programs with the Hawaii Venture Capital Association. Sometimes Think Tech, say it working to raise time, public awareness in Hawaii. Check yeah, us out at thinktechhawaii.com. Think Tech Radio is also brought to you by Inmobi. Since its inception in 2007, Inmobi has grown to become the world's fun. largest independent it. mobile advertising network, serving time, over 100 billion mm -hmm. mobile oh, ads yeah. to date. It has built its product in parts just, of the yeah. world where the mobile phone is not just a screen, it's the yeah. only screen. Oh, yes. After launching in the US and Europe in 2010, Inmobi has more than that doubled just, its yeah. global network BYOD's from 7 BYOD. billion to 60 they billion impressions it. monthly, and has yeah. offices on four continents, in Bangalore, Johannesburg, and London, in Nairobi, New York, and Paris, in San Francisco, Seoul, Singapore, and Tokyo, in Mobi. We're back. 
We're live and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Ceres, here with John Scott, Department Chair of Remington College. But before we get back to the conversation, we have an announcement from our founder, Jay Fidel. Jay, take it away. Hey, Attila. I always have announcements for you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for the time, but I would like to talk about our OC16 program this week because it bears directly on John Scott's comments tonight on the show. It's called, this is the program uh, on OC16, How the iPod Has Changed Education at Mid-Pacific Institute in Manoa. It's on OC16 TV starting for its premiere at 10.30 p.m. on Sunday and then six more times during the week. If you want to see the times, check out OC16.tv or thinktechhawaii.com. It, uh, it features a walk around Midpac, a look at the uh, Weinberg Tech Center there, a conversation with Bob McIntosh, who's the director of technology for MidPAC. Another conversation with a very articulate teacher by the name of Mark Hines. He's the director of exploratory. That's his title, director of exploratory. Uh, MidPAC exploratory, MPX is what they call it. Kevin Doyle is the director of the arts there. He's also involved in the iPad program. And uh, Kim Rowley, who is a physics teacher who uses iPads in her class. Class. They all do. Every kid has an iPad at Midpack, and the kids teach the teachers. It's a new paradigm, the new kind of education. You're going to enjoy see, seeing this. And John, I hope you take a look at it. 10:30 p.m. this Sunday. I'm on it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Thank you, Attila. Uh, back to you. All right. Thank you, Jay. And uh, you know, that's uh, just that kind of information alone, John, should make you feel real safe about your Apple stock, right? You know it's not going anywhere when the kids are using it. Uh, no, it's true. It's true. It's, it's not going anywhere. Uh, when we were last talking, uh, when we last left the conversation, we were talking about the kind of changes that are happening in Remington and why vocational training uh, in technology is not working out. And where we last left the conversation, uh, we, we were talking about how there's a there's another program that you have that is very successful, uh, where people are getting out of the school, uh, they're getting work right away and technology program is not. What was that program? Why don't you tell us a little bit about the differences between that kind of industry and the technology one? You know, I would actually say that probably our technology program had evolved so quickly, and that is technology is evolving so quickly, that over the time that I've been out at Remington, which would be, let's say, 13 years, mm -hmm. friends, sure. uh, we started with, uh, with Server 2000, we went 2003, 2000, uh, 2008, 2012. Okay. Yeah, that was and, before and the cloud, pre-cloud <laughs> computing. Exactly right. I, I certainly remember my first presentation on Active Directory. I said, oh, my goodness. I even had to go to, I had to, go to Novell to learn about uh, the Novell Directory services, so I knew something about Active Directory. My point is this about that. We have, uh, our, our technology has changed so rapidly in, in the time, in the, in the 10 or 13 years, uh, that, that we were always, you know, we were always trying to be right there, mid, you know, right in the middle of the stream of the technology, but technology continued to change. And, but I think uh, other, stu other schools are doing this. They're able mm. to train their students, and uh, I'm guessing something about the industry has changed. Yes. Now, the, what's, what, what's happened with this other program? What was the program that, that was successful? You said you had a fantastic... Well, well actually, we have the International Business Program, uh, as well as our criminal justice. The medical and the, one. And, and, but the clinical medical, is, uh, particularly employment is the issue, mm. and that is. Uh, at, at Remington, if you're not placing your guys, if they're not getting to work right away right here, we, that's kind of a litmus test for us. So they get most excellent, and, and you know they're still around. You know that they're getting good employment numbers. So they're doing the right thing. They're meeting the community's needs. Let's just get back to the, C, the computer networking technology program. We, uh, we, we were there, but actually the community needs right now, if you ask me, are strictly in security. Security is the wide, wide open issue. And our program was more along uh, networking technology and network administration. And that is uh, actually how to, how to manage a, a company from the Active Directory standpoint. So we see, we see that the technology changing and changing and changing. And, and in clinical medical, um, the need, the need remains the same, right? The needs, oh, remains, I see. The, the healthcare needs, right? Uh, the business needs in our international business program. Criminal justice, criminal justice. <laughs> we, we definitely have people that are uh, definitely hireable right out of our program to get into the CJ um, career field. Mm. And so really the, the change has been 
the world around us. It's not been the training. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I agree. You can learn uh, Server 2012 all day long. Mm -hmm. You're not going to find many Server 2012 clients out in the, out in the real world. It's true. I don't so, take any issue with that. That's for sure. And so uh, training someone on it is kind of seems obscure. Like you're learning something that's that's out of date. In fact, I remember uh, Cisco now changed their business model in the same way. Mm -hmm. uh, and Microsoft, I know there's no there's no more uh, MCSE program. They called it something else, and they they've changed it. I know there's hosted Active Directory now that uh, Microsoft Office 365 does. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these um, they it's kind of like the cloud and outsourcing is kind of sh chipped away at these jobs that your students could have had. You know, Tilly, that, that is a good point, and that is the cloud, and that is everything is available to you just with an RJ45 plug right into the wall. Or Wi-Fi. So, or Wi-Fi, yeah, exactly yeah. right. We all have although, tablets, come on. Uh, it, it's true, although I, I was rewiring one of my classrooms even last night for a gigabit. Because uh, one of our medical one of our medical applications requires gigabit. I said, my goodness, I remember when these people didn't require that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so the applications, of course, applications will move up. They'll, they'll suck up as much bandwidth and as much CPU power as you can give them anyway. But, but the point is, yeah, the point is that uh, it, it's more available now, and that is the cloud. The cloud where people can just turn over. We don't have to worry about administration. Let's just plug it in. We don't have to worry about backing up our information. We don't have to worry about security. Wrong. Mm, they security. Should be about their security. That's what we're talking about during the break. See, security is <laughs> yeah. a big deal. Yeah, exactly. If I lose my smartphone, heaven forbid, mm. you know, they, people can start sending out emails as me. And in fact, I remember reading about how um, some of these, uh, once the geolocation information services came out uh, from Apple and Google, several big companies removed devices from their, uh, from their uh, staff. The BYOD problem, the one we were talking about, bring, bring your own device. device. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, that's some tough stuff. So, um, you know, what can, we, what can we do about that? Well, we've got to go with it. Okay, BYOD, right? So people are going to show up with their own devices, their own ways of, uh, of hooking into the network and with their own realities. Uh, we see our students as being, we call them the millennials. Mm. You know, the millennials, they're, they're all plugged in. They're all wired in anyway, wherever you see them. You know, they've got their, they got their tablet or they've got their, they got their iPad or their iTouch, whatever it is, and they're already, they're already someplace else. They're already working, right? And so our, our, our issues here were how do, we, how do we get into these people's thought process? Because they're already, we've already lost them. They're already out there someplace, right? Mm. And that's the deal. So from an educational standpoint, we want to be able to come in through that path. We want, we want to be able to come in through the way that these young people, are, are in being engaged by the network. And that brings us to uh, Jay's show, how the iPad has changed education. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. now the, the students now become the teachers. They're the ones with the... Uh, I, I noticed that he, uh, Jay was saying that uh, Mark Hines is, uh, uh, has a program called MPX. Mm -hmm. There is a lot, you know, there's a lot of interest now in these uh, massively online courses, all of which under the guise of like edX. edX are, are actually not, not so much teaching the class as learning how the students are learning. Well, what is MPX? Tell me about it. Well, okay, well, I just picked up on uh, what the X, because that would be mid-pack X. But, mm -hmm. for example, any school that is actually involved in this consortium of individuals, uh, consortium of companies that are trying to learn about uh, online uh, learning uh, are involved in a program called edX. Mm -hmm. But their name, for example, Harvard would be Harvard X, for example. I, I believe that's how it would be. They put a little X at the very end of it to indicate their affiliation. Now, when, incidentally, you know the X program itself, you know, this, is, uh, this, is, this was uh, Harvard and MIT together, a couple of fun living Boston colleges. Harvard started. Great parties, I hear. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> a lot of math goes on there. <laughs> and it was a long time ago, October 2012. So put yourself in this October 2012. Wow. Harvard had their first uh, uh, online class. Do you have any idea what the enrollment was? I, I think you do. You know what the enrollment was? Because I, uh, I said, well, how much? 5,000? 10,000? 100,000. 100,000 individuals signed up for Harvard's first online class. Incredible. MIT, who is also part of this uh, edX program, they subsequently come out with a tech class that started at the beginning of this year, 2013, and they had 155,000 individuals that said they wanted to be part of the course. Well, now, how is that different from e-learning or distance learning? How is the X program different from, I mean, I, I've taken uh, online courses. Okay. I, I know what 
to expect. Mm -hmm. You know, there's message boards, there's things you need to post, there's readings, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. How is this different? Okay, finally, the X program is actually focused on how the participant is going to learn. So we have to think about it like this. Although it looks like a course where students are taking, taking information in and they're going to be self-evaluated or they're going to be evaluated by the peers, and at the very end they may possibly get a, a diploma if they want to pay the bucks for it, the point is that we're learning from them how they learn, what works and what doesn't work. And that's what this X program is all about, is how making it different. Because I'll tell you what, um, some of these online courses, uh, back in the day we had a thing called correspondence courses. You know what the correspondence was? Mailman comes, you open up the package, you do your work, you mail it back, right? And after a while you end up getting a diploma. It's called a correspondence course. Wow. They had yeah. cars without seatbelts <laughs> at that time, didn't yes. they? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so, so. By, by the same token, the next thing that happened is we started to have these correspondence courses by email. Mm -hmm. And they called that distance learning. And I said, that's incredible. That, uh, that's, not, that's not training. I, I don't know what that is. But uh, it, it was kind of the functional equivalent of trying to explain, um, if you pardon this uh, uh, analogy here, trying to explain uh, women's mud wrestling to a professional wrestler. And that is, the wrestler looks in and he sees it, but you don't get it. He doesn't understand what's going on. Because, because here's a person who has almost like a kabuki-esque form of, of, uh, of presentation, and he's looking at that. And he said, well, what's going on? I felt the same way, exactly the same way, when I started to see these um, correspondence classes that were done by email. I said, that is not it at all. This, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that is. I got to say, I had a great experience there with Argosy University a couple summers ago when they wanted me to teach a course where the students were down in Guam. And they kind of took a deep breath and I said, well, they're in Guam. Are you going to fly me down there? Or how am I going to talk to these people? And they said, well, you're not going to do that. We're going to bring them up here. They'll be here for about two weeks out of your course. I thought, ah, I'm going to do this. I signed up for streaming uh, for a streaming service that came out of Las Vegas right here, and I set up streaming courses. So I set up a time frame where they could actually see the streaming, or or they could actually on demand pick it up. And I'll tell you what happened. Well, the we're gonna first see you after class. the break. See you for after the break. <laughs> okay. Everyone, you're gonna you're gonna get the you're gonna get your answers uh, your questions answered when we get back. This is Thing Tech. Stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. That's exciting. All right, let me hear what happened. Seven sixty-one KGU. Part of the yeah. Wall Street Business Network. The, the whole thing about teaching is connection. The drive east to Hawaii Kai is good. Traffic's normal going over to the windward side. Already very slow going west, but that's typical for a Friday afternoon. The Moanalua backed up through Fort Shafter Flats. The H1 is stop and go when you get to the west end of the airport viaduct. Inbound traffic from the west on the H1 slows before the exits on the viaduct. The Moanalua slows at the merge. H1 eastbound is slow through the Ward Avenue bottleneck. As a matter of fact, back in the days. So the connection was made. The connection. And so. We had a most productive from the very first evening that we met. Evenings, Saturdays and Sundays, evenings, Saturdays and Sundays. We had a great, great class because we were connected and that was the difference. So pre-connection, having some actual physical connection and then doing the good follow-up. Just kind of sandwiching that physical uh, presence. Do, 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 and that is, make sure you have your connection, you have a very limited amount of time, but the function of the teacher is to lead and teach. You have to have that. Mm. They have to have it. They gotta have my class. They gotta have my class, right? So that when when they go out, they can say, I remember I took this guy to the And so uh, that that's the part that you gotta have. And that's why in these massively online classes, we're gonna find out here that they're okay for um, being a supplemental part mm. of the program, but they're not going to. Replace. Honey, if we had installed solar water heating last year, we would have saved about $600 on our electric bill. Wow, that's yeah. like 40 pounds of pocket. Or 15 bikinis. So, uh, 800 pounds of rice. Or 200 pairs of slippers. Or 750 malasadas. Well, that's a lot of malasada. Solar water is the first step towards big energy savings. With Hawaii Energy's limited time rebate, get solar water heating for about two grand and reduce your electric bill up to 40%. That's a lot of boss. Visit hawaiienergy.com slash solar water. 
With the Kahiawa Wind Farm on Maui and the Kahuku and Kawailoa Wind Farms on Oahu, First Wind is pleased to create clean, local sources of energy powered by Hawaii Straight Winds. Understanding our unique environment and host culture, First Wind develops projects that support local communities and provide net benefits to native wildlife. Embracing the concept of caring from Mauka to Makai. Who come a cunning? May the wind blow towards a sustainable future for Hawaii's people. For more information, well, visit firstwind.com. We'll see about what the difference in philosophy is. We're back, we're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Ceres. We're here with John Scott, department chair at Remington College. And we had an interesting uh, conversation just before we went to the break where we had an interesting revealing. We had a grand revealing to make. But uh, before we do that, uh, Jay has an announcement for us. Jay, take uh, it Thank away. you again, Attila. And John, I have a, a one other announcement I'd like to make here on ThinkTech. On May 23rd, and by the way, that's next Thursday, uh, ThinkTech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association will be presenting a very important, I really mean that, luncheon panel program at the Plaza Club. It's called our 2013 update on housing in Hawaii, waking up to the American dream at a cost we hope, we truly hope we can afford. Uh, Harry Saunders of Castle and Cook, Hawaii, a big home developer, will moderate, and Paul Brubaker, economist and provocateur, will provide opening remarks. The panel includes a Stanford car developer, Tony Ching, executive director of the Hawaii Community Development Authority, it's HCDA, which is right in the middle of the developments in Kaka'ako. Paul Kay of Kamehameha Schools also has a fair amount of property in Kaka'ako. Kaka'ako, Nick Vanderboom of Howard Hughes Corporation, lots of property in Kaka'ako, uh, John Wallenstrom of Forest City, also developing in that area, and John White of Pacific Resource Partners, uh, a labor union organization directly involved in all these developments. So these panelists uh, are principals in the impending development of billions of dollars of housing in Hawaii. This is a hot topic. Check the newspaper almost every day. As housing goes, so goes the state. But housing is fraught with delays, permitting issues, activism, bureaucracy, high prices, high taxes. Uh, development of homes isn't what it's used to be or what it's cracked up to be, and neither is home ownership. So like it or not, we're on the cusp in Hawaii of a housing transformation, especially in Honolulu. How will that work out? Will we like it? Big question. Find out on Thursday, May 23rd, next week. You want to come, sign up soon. This is going to be a crowded one. Sign up at hvca.org. See you there, Attila, John. Thank you so much, Jay. You know, uh, that housing, uh, that housing uh, situation mm -hmm. reminds me of something that I heard on the radio just this morning. Evidently, the uh, World Health Organization recommends that we now start eating bugs. So they're starting to be, become bug farmers. Well, well, good source of protein. Good source of protein, protein. but mm -hmm. when you start eating bugs uh, that are raised in the city, now mm -hmm. those are, you don't know what they've been eating. They haven't been down to a rich forest eating leaves, right? They've been eating garbage. Yeah, and God but, knows what else. But, so, By the same token, when I was eating ants, um, ants. it wasn't for sport, you know. I, I was hungry. You know, a little kid? Didn't you, ants. didn't you eat ants when you were a little kid? No. You know, no, I, I I didn't eat ants, Play-Doh, mm -hmm. glue, oh, any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you mentioned here in your bio that you were born in an early child, so maybe that has something to do with it. I was born at an early age. Early yes, age, there you go. <laughs> born early age. But um, back to our experiment, we were talking about this interesting experiment you had where you had uh, you took a course, uh, or you, I'm sorry, you taught a course to students in Guam. They came, they learned from you, and then they went back. And tell me, what was the outcome of this whole experiment? Hmm. I hope that they remembered John Scott. I hope that they remembered uh, an information systems, this was a business course, right? An information systems course that was taught by a guy in Honolulu, that when he walked into the classroom for the very first time, there was already connection. When they I walked you. in, they knew me. When I walked in, you know how, you know, first days, you know, a teacher walks in, you know, and you look at the class and you say, hmm, this is going to be good. They were alive. <laughs> they, they, were, they were animated. Uh, people say, hey, you look like yourself. And, and I appreciated that, too. You know, these are local kids from Guam. They're coming up. And we immediately made connection, which meant that I could get started right away with the teaching. They understood me. They understood the, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, 
they, they understood my sense of humor uh, my, and my expectations for them, my needs to be able to connect with them and they needed to connect with me. So we had no dead time. And so in the, uh, in the evenings and the weekends that we had together in the next two weeks and stuff, it was great because we already understood what we were all about. Now how many students would you say were in this course? Okay, in this particular class, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I recall it's either 12 or 14. So it was a small well, classroom. Means, yeah, small classroom, exactly right. Small classroom at Argosy. And uh, the, the, the technique that we used was to actually show to me, it showed that you have to have a teacher. You, know, you can't just, you can't just uh, give them the emails. In fact, canned video isn't going to work also. There still has to be this, uh, this meeting of the minds. You still have to be able to challenge them. You've got to draw them out. You've got to make sure that they're tracking in the right ways. You've got to kind of take responsibility for their learning in a way. You always tell them, of course, that they're responsible for their own learning. If they get nothing out of the course, who's, you know, who, who's to blame when every teacher knows that we're on the line every day for every student that we have. They, we, they, every teacher knows that. They, they, they understand that we feel for them. That's why we're there for them. So the, the outcome on that class, I feel, is that it reinforces that you definitely need to have the teacher in the loop, the instructor, the mentor, the, the person who's going to actually urge the bringing together of these thoughts. And maybe a slave driver. Maybe this person is also going to be the one that's going to have to uh, do the evaluation at the very end. You know, uh, you know, put the umpire's hat on and say, "Well, I can only book them the way I see them." You get the A. You get the A. You don't, which is also something that instructors probably just hate to do. That part, right? Well, it's it's hard, and it is based on merit. But at the same yeah. time, I mean, uh, it could be that the demographic of students that you were teaching oh. could it be that they are used to learning in this format? For example, for me. When I was in college, I did everything on paper. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wrote notebooks and notebooks, and I rewrote them. And part of that writing, the physical writing, was the way it got into my brain. That's how it stuck there. And it took me a while to figure that out, because I tried laptops and everything else. And my wife in law school, just the opposite. Everything had to be electronic. Mm -hmm. So it was completely different. It just depended on the person, depended on what they felt most comfortable using. Now, mm -hmm. when my mm -hmm. kids start school and they show up, uh, and they have an iPad. They're teaching the, they're they're instructing the professor on how to teach them certain topics. It's it kind of flips it around. Uh, how does that how does that work? Because it sounds to me like the the program that maybe you started uh, mm -hmm. may also mm -hmm. be the only um, may only reach a certain demographic. And then, Okay, I think we're right at the cutting edge right here. Uh -huh. The Harvard X, the MIT X, the Berkeley X, these and perhaps the MPA, the Midpac X, these are the programs that are trying to figure that out right now. And that is how how do we actually how do we actually communicate with them? Yes, we're gonna deliver the course, but we're paying really, really close attention to exactly what the learning outcome is supposed to be. So we these people that we're talking about, you know, the ones that are using the keyboards instead of writing and stuff, I myself, I'm kind of like you. It, it's not known until it's written by me. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I had to write everything down. But once but I wrote it down, based on I, I guess, yeah, it's, it's not everyone. Everyone laughs at me because I'm a total yeah. tech person. Yeah. But if I want to remember something, write it on a piece of paper. I can throw it away afterwards. It's in my head. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. it's on a mm -hmm. piece of paper. But the, that's just me, though. The, the millennials that we're looking at, I was really concerned about this, too, because they're tied into touch, into keypad, into texting, and into time slicing. And that is, you know, it, it, they're not multitasking. They're just stealing some time from my conversation with them <laughs> to, to do some texting. But, but I, I, I kind of understand what, what they're doing. I mean, I, I, I got I to tell you this. Um, it, it's only been recently that I've been using uh, my telephone, my smartphone, uh, to actually read. And I'm reading a fantastic novel that uh, I had to read when I was back in high school, back in the day, and, and, and particularly in this novel right here. I skipped the first 100 pages because oh, I want to just get to where the action is. I come home late at night because I teach in the evenings right here. We don't eat. I go to the, uh, to the breakfast table. There's my wife sitting there, Fran. And, and, and I'm kind of listening to her, but I'm also reading uh, an incredible passage. This is, it was so visually rich. I was just locked into it. And, and, and over this story about Jonah being, being told to me by this minister in a pulpit, uh, I hear this, you know, you know who you remind me of? And it was that voice, and that tone of voice. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So I said, uh, 
Are you in trouble with the wife? I'm in trouble. I'm in deep trouble. And I say, uh, Robert, Downey, Robert Downey Jr., <laughs> she's looking at me. She's giving me, uh, Will Chamberlain? No, no. She says, you know, she, and, and she has a good friend. She says, you, you remind me of, uh, I, I think her name is Camille. She says, Camille. It's a lady, right? And I said, oh, this is going to be interesting. What's this all about? She always is on her tablet reading or communicating all the time. And we had kind of pointed to that as a problem with kids these days, as they would sit at the dinner table and they wouldn't interact, that they'd actually be uh, working on uh, either games or something that we would call nonsensical. So there I am looking Fran right in the eye and I realized, I said, jeepers, they're not gaming. They're, they're not gaming. They're, their minds are actually taking in information. They're, they're being stimulated. So, let me say I apologize to Fran, you know, and, and I, well, I told her. Well, in your to defense, I'm going to give you a magic bullet. Did you know uh, that 70% of all internet traffic that takes place on tablets is for shopping? Shopping. Shopping. There you go. So you can say at least, you know, yeah, maybe I remind you of this person, but at least I'm not shopping. Uh, <laughs> exactly right. You know, guys don't shop. We go buy. We buy. Women shop. Purchase. Yeah, we purchase. We, we just do the deal. We don't mm, shop. I don't want shop. Well, but, you know, it, it is what most people use these tablets for. And, and in response, of course, all the major retailers have redone their sites so that they're tablet-friendly, they're mobile-friendly. But uh, that's kind of, that was, a, that was a, a topic we explored a few weeks ago on the show. But, um, you know, let's talk about, uh, you know, since we're on the education topic, uh, connection versus completion. So your students came and they connected with you. How did they do in terms of actually learning the material and finishing that course? You know what? We'll have that answer. Yes, when you we will. get back from the break. <laughs> yes, you will. This is Think Tech. We're live, and you're listening to Think Tech on AM 760 KGU and streaming live on the internet. We'll be back after the break. 760 KGU. Part of the Wall Street Business oh, yeah. Network. Exactly right. Going west, the H1 oh, is stop and go time. halfway so, down the airport viaduct. The Moanua is now back up all the way to Middle Street. Things. It's going to be slow until the Kahumano overpass. Inbound traffic from the west is jammed and backed up at the Middle Street merge. In town, we've got a stall on the H1 eastbound at the Liliha overpass. It's on the shoulder, but it's very close to moving traffic. I use caution. No problems to the Woodward side or Hawaii Kai. Anybody who's worried about the pedagogy of instruction, they hate it. Mm -hmm. uh, what that is, is the other piece to the puzzle, and that is, it is that direct piece that you see, and, 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 and the explanation is right there, and you have it. And that's, that's what Khan Academy is. Now, that's totally, for these guys over here, you know, on, you know like at the UH, mm -hmm. they don't get that at all. But, you know, from a tech standpoint, to be able to tie in, mm, to tie in the training, with the Khan Academy type approach as well as the educational approach. And that is, uh, yeah, there's there's still a drill and road, there's still an emonics, there's still the understanding that has to do, but Khan gets right down to the piece. And that is, what's the essence of this in 10 minutes or less? It's like uh, Cliff Notes. Yeah, Cliff, Cliff Notes for... Cliff Notes, yeah, 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 it is, it is. Uh, Why are you gonna sit here and read this whole book? Here's what you need to know. In desperation, right? Yeah. <laughs> But I never before. started out. <laughs> never I actually never, I never read any of those, but I know a lot of people did. Oh, I, I, you know, I tell you. Uh, I didn't even know what's in there. I think I maybe looked at one once. Just for uh, mm, it, it, to me, it was, it was way too late. Hawaii, the state of energy. clean energy, is also brought to you by Hawaiian Electric Company, powering oh, the growth right. and development of no, Hawaii so since it was future. started by oh, King Kalakaua in 1891. Today, Hawaiian Electric and its subsidiaries, Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric so. Light Company, serve more than 95% of our state, providing reliable electric service essential to our quality of life. The Hawaiian Electric Companies are also leading our transition to clean energy. By increasing our renewable energy use and improving energy efficiency, we're reducing Hawaii's dependence on imported oil and in providing a more sustainable and secure future for Hawaii. For more information, visit hawaiisenergyfuture.com. Hawaii, the state of clean energy, is also brought to you by the State Energy Office of the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Mike Tourism. Sawicki, How can we secure a better future for Hawaii? Part of our, One way uh, is clean energy. Audience. 
and the state energy yeah, office is steering Hawaii to that clean energy take future. That picture, yeah. Hawaii is Let's rich with natural picture, renewable yeah. resources, the sun, the wind, the ocean, and the land. And they are all being tapped to meet Hawaii's clean energy initiatives to generate electricity, create jobs, spur economic growth, and reduce our dependence on imported foreign oil. To learn more, visit energy.hawaii.gov. We're back. We're live, and you're listening to Think Tech Friday. I'm your host, Attila Ceres. We're here with John Scott. He's the department chair at Remington College, and we're talking about the state of tech education in Hawaii. Uh, when we last left the conversation, we were talking about uh, uh, connection versus completion. And uh, you know, in this last segment of, of the uh, of the show, you know, we, this is such a huge topic. We're going to completely run out of time, but I wanted to talk a little bit about your completion ratios, where we're going uh, as a society, particularly here in Hawaii, uh, and uh, what can we expect from these X-type courses, the ones that are being now caught, uh, taught at Harvard and at MIT? Okay, first there is a real high correlation between connecting with the student and the student's abilities to complete the program. The student has to have faith in you. You've got to be able to explain to them the relevance of, and I do this every day, the relevance of the lesson for the day, the course, the program, to this student and to everything around them. So if they don't get that relevance, because that's really what they're there for, if they don't get the relevance, they're going to get off track. They, uh, other things are going to come up and, and, you know, and heavens knows, our, our students particularly, there's a lot of distractions out there. So, so you make the connection, they understand exactly why you're there for them. And, and the completion rates then is what really, really does work. And, and I think that you'll find that when you want to compare, and we're, Remington College is a not-for-profit uh, educational uh, institution, but if you, want to, if you want to compare the small schools that actually make the connections versus the larger institutions that are just mandated by the state to give out these courses and there is no connection, that we have like a dramatic, and I would say if it's not, if it's not threefold, it's at least twofold, twice mm. the, com the completion rate. Uh, for us, I, I really don't know what the numbers are here for, for Remington, but I know they're incredibly high compared to uh, a, a state institution. So uh, it's for sure the connection. You need to make that connection here. That in itself is So we want to make that connection, right? And, and you think that these X courses uh, are, are the key, right? It's um, something different. Careful. The, <laughs> the thing that we found out from the 100,000 students that clicked in and said they were very interested in the Harvard, uh, uh, let's see, the Harvard free class mm -hmm. is that uh, maybe 5,700 completed. Mm -hmm. Yikes. 5%. Yeah. No. 5,000 you know, out of 100,000. So where's the connection, oh, my friend? Oh, I see. There's no connection. Oh, 5%. And that's exactly why you have to understand here that they're learning, you know, this, this X program is learning exactly how to get the information out, but they were also going to learn that connection is so important. So that was an epic fail. That was well, a huge failure. Well, I don't know, because if they're, they're learning. 5,000 out of 100,000 complete. Well, yeah, it's but these guys that are worried about pedagogy when they should be worried about andragogy or at least learning. At least these guys. Andragogy. These right? yes. You know, I think I saw him on Star Trek. He was one of the aliens with the two little ears. Why don't you well, tell well, us what that means? <laughs> well, well, okay, well, hmm. pedagogy to me always talks about the learning environment for students. Kids. Mm. Kids, right? Pediatrician, you're right. Peds, yeah, peds. Um, when we're really talking about uh, young adults and adults, because this is basically our our student population, it's going to be young adults and adults, people that are already working and they're in what they call a continuing education or lifelong learning, or the professionals, they're motivated by different things and they learn differently. And of course, maturationally, we learn things differently too as we move on in time right here. So we need we need to kind of focus more on on this movement, and that is let's let's take a look and see what is happening now to these people as they move on. Because you know, productivity is the issue. You can be pro productive today and not so productive tomorrow, right? And so we need to be able to instill on in, into people this ability to continue to be more and more engaged in what's around them and more productive. And you can't just come out and learn something and say, oh, got that. It's going to change, my friend. True, right? It's, yeah. it, it's, things are always going to change. Well, I've always been under the impression that the point of a college education is to hone you on different skills that you can use to learn new topics throughout your life. And just because you get a degree in 
psychology. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to become a psychologist, but it means that you can go out and pick up new information and be able to understand it, interpret it, and manipulate it later in your life. It doesn't matter what you field you go into. That's been my philosophy hmm. on, the, on the education system. So do you feel that maybe these, these X courses still give you that kind of power as, as you get older? Does it give you that kind of, of enthusiasm about life and understanding about the world around us that you wouldn't have otherwise? Nope, not at all. The courses, for example, the MIT course in artificial intelligence, I've been looking at that. I've always been interested in AI. I said, you know, I want to just bang that course out and see what it's all about. That, that, the reason that course is there is so that MIT and the other participating universities can figure out exactly how they can teach a course at a distance. And that's the key. They don't know how to teach a course at a distance. And so they're going to learn from that. They're totally going to learn from that. As to your point about uh, universities that uh, are supposed to be able to light the fires and, and inspire people to go on to become all they can, I think that's very, very interesting. But you know, in a two-year career at college, we urge the students to say, please, don't, don't spend all this money and this time just trying to figure out what you want to be. We, we, we are here in the following areas. And, and jump on. Jump on. And, and the ride is going to be quick and fast. And if this is where you want to go, this is where we're going. And that's our approach. Mm. And I think most approaches of, of most two-year schools, right? I think so. You know, two years, <laughs> desperately short amount of time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we've been on the air a lot longer than that, I'll tell you that much. So ThinkTech has been on for a long time, you know, trying to, uh, mm -hmm. trying to get that, uh, the word out, you know, trying to raise public awareness. So, um, you know, one of the other things we talked about over here was, um, was about these uh, UH expenditures uh, and the Khan uh, University. Why don't you tell us about that? Okay. Um, Khan Academy is something that, I, that came up on my screen probably about two or three years ago here. It was and this is the future, you feel, for Hawaii? Yeah, it is. We have to look at this in, 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 this, in this context. Khan Academy takes all knowledge and breaks it into ten-minute pieces. Ten minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and, and basically it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's in the areas of, uh, of maybe sciences and mathematics, perhaps a little bit of physics, but still it's neural in, in learning, and that is you pick the pieces that you want to go to, and you're driven by yourself, and the Khan Academy page will keep track of your progress also. So in a way, you're driven by this. Now here is the issue here, and that is it's just 10 minute pieces. I mean, it's not the big picture. It's not, it's not a real learning environment as much as it is that piece of technology that you want to know about, that mm -hmm. particular piece that you want to know about, that piece to the puzzle. Khan Academy melded with the other techniques that are going to pop up in, uh, in our edX programs that we see are probably, are probably the right pieces that are going to be dropping in here, but you're never, never going to get away from the idea, mark my words, mm -hmm. okay, that you have to have a teacher. You need somebody to actually bring the relevance and put the information into context for the students so that the student says, great, this is so much better than the book. This is so much better than the video. I get it. I get it, John Scott. And, and when they say that, you say, that's good. This is a very good thing. So you think that it's that person-to-person -person interaction. It's the same reason why you and I are sitting here in the studio today versus doing this over the phone or you sitting in your in your comfy chair at home. There's just something to be said about that person to person interaction that you get. And that's how you learn. Right? As human beings. We have for thousands of years. I, I think that, that that process is a very social process, you know, the learning process. It's very social. It relies a lot on communications. So much more is exchanged with timbre of voice, with gesture, with eye contact, with emotion and feeling, with dialogue mm. that you simply just don't get when you get a little bit of a video right here and then, okay, go do the homework of the back of the chapter. It's true. And, you know, most YouTube videos are about 10 minutes or less in length also. 10 so. minutes, exactly right. My, my tech guys, you know, when we're, when we're trying to learn something hard, I will actually say, hey, guys, head on out to YouTube. You can find it out there, too. As they still come back with plenty of questions. Plenty of questions, but they say you're right. That little piece that we we're looking for, it's right there. This guy's right on. You say, right. Well, of course he is. And so now they just need someone to kind of give it to that next level, and that's why yes. at Khan Academy you mentioned it was a tracking system. But is there a face-to-face -face interaction also? No, there's not. That, that, oh, there's not. All right, online. right. So it's it's all kind of neural driven. You know, you have to be able to select. You have to kind of move down the path yourself right here. That's why I think that perhaps artificial intelligence in the background of some type of a learning process may be the key. 
and that is an AI system that actually monitors where you want to go, knows what you do know, and then and then provides the path, provides the path, and and maybe an avatar, whatever you like, you know, kind of somebody with a chicken head or maybe a babe or whatever it is. But the avatar comes up every morning and says, "Hello, Attila. While you were sleeping, I found out the following information for you. I found it the Bibliotheca Nacional, and I thought you'd be interested in this. Also, the news for today is ah. Now, how about that? And that is, is that connection or no? That's a good connection. Yeah. All we have to do is get re uh, get ready to uh, listen to sock puppets in the morning <laughs> when we wake up. I bet you didn't know this new political theory. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> and, you know, with that, we're going to end on sock puppets. Thank okay. you so much, John, for coming by. Really appreciate it. It's been a privilege to have you on. Once again, John Scott, uh, Remington College, and he's the department chair of the now soon to be retired uh, technology training division. So, um, you know, and if any of you listening missed any part of this program, uh, be sure to visit our website. Uh, you can download the podcast, this podcast, previous episodes that you may have missed, and the website is thinktechhawaii.com. And a quick shout out to all the homies over at Remington. You're the guys, Chico, man, my man, thanks for keeping my network up. And Mr. Lou, thank you for very letting, letting me get off this afternoon to be able to talk with all you. Right. Thank you. Well, thank you, thank you Jay Fidel, for keeping us on the air. Leah Rodriguez, whose passion makes ThinkTech possible, and we'll be back next Friday. But remember to appreciate life, do good to others, and have a great weekend. Aloha. Yeah. Thank you.